Alright, I wanted to do, show a, a little demo of the current state of the hexapod. Um, now this one is named Dimitri. Uh, there's a couple of updates to it. Uh, first of all, this is designed to be made out of aluminum. Now I used a 3D printer and I made it black, so, so some of the parts look are, are a little bit hard to see. Um, but some of the things that changed are like the tibia design. Uh, first of all, I changed it up cosmetically. I decided to bring up this, this top part here, which I think gives it a, an overall better look. Uh, also, you can probably see that there's a crease here, and that's because it's a split design, which I was told that would it'd make it easier to make out of aluminum. Plus, they could also make it hollow on the inside. And they, the two halves bolt together. They're, they're identical, just mirrored. Um, the next update is the femur here. Now the femur is also a split design and each side is identical and sort of lock into place and then they're held in with this bolt. Uh, the bolt probably doesn't do too much but it just put it there. I think it gives it a little bit better look. Um, again designed to be made out of aluminum. Um, before it'd be impossible to assemble if it was all one piece. So now it has to be, you have to attach one side to the motors and then the other side slides right on. Makes it much easier to assemble. Uh, the coxa or the shoulder mechanism here is is identical to the other one except that it's a little bit beefier on on the inside here and again it's hard to see because of the uh, because of the the lighting and the black plastic um, but this is the part that breaks the most often so ideally this part should be made out of aluminum first the next part that breaks is the femur and the tibias never break but I guess just to give an overall matching look that they should all be made out of aluminum um, the next part is the, the head mechanism right here. Uh, this, this took the, the longest to design. Um, first of all, the gears the, look a lot different from before. These gears are much better. That they're designed using the, the involute curve shape, which, you, which is a, a pretty popular method for a gear design. Um, it makes the, the gears operate much more smoothly and they definitely function a lot better and I'm sure they're stronger than the method I used last time which was just a bunch of triangles um, put on a disc or, or cut out of a disc, I forget how I did it, but um, this design should work much better. Uh, I, I still am tweaking with the calibration of this particular head but overall I can tell that it's much stronger. Um, also what adds strength is this new gear housing here or it's kinda like a differential housing in a way, the way the gears are set up. Um, basically I just I made a sphere and then I cut out places for all the gears and it's much beefier. The other one was a little flimsy and parts kept breaking. So um, that's pretty much it in terms of design for strength and other cosmetic stuff. Uh, the other part that I've included is the MX28 motor. Uh, the last one was RX28 based. Uh, so these motors have uh, four times the resolution. They implement a PID loop um, and they, they don't use a, uh, they don't use potentiometers. They use uh, Hall effect sensors to to detect the the angle. So, this this increases the the overall servo range um, that you can um, have a desired angle. You can set a desired angle to anything between zero and three hundred and sixty degrees. Um, but uh, the the important thing is that it, it it eliminates the wear that caused the shaking of the previous model. So. I actually calculated it out. Um, the the previous potentiometers were only rated for 30 hours of hexapod usage, which is really really not good. Um, after 30 hours, it, it was expected that some of them would start um, the the resistive material would wear away and it would start shaking. So uh, these hopefully should never wear out. Um, other parts should wear out, like the motor might wear out before before the the angle sensors do. All right, some of the other features that I included in the hexapod are pretty much software based. Um, so the, the original the original way that we started the hexapod was that I had to you had to basically put your hand underneath and then start the start the the program um, after SSH into it. Uh, the reason being was that you'd get a power surge with all the motors turning on at once. It would try to suck too much current, and the the power supply would shut off, and that would reset the computer. It was kind of a Kind of a pain. So um, right now I, I have it set up so it should start up the motors uh, one at a time. So that prevents any power surge, and that way you don't have to put your hand underneath to, to start it up. So let me go ahead and power it up. So and also the nice part is that you don't have to set the legs in like this. So I'm, I'll set legs out like this, and then you'll see that it moves much better. Here we go. 
go. Starting up now. Uh, there we go. And <laughs> I guess this table's a little bit too small. <laughs> so that's the only reason why I had to lift it up. Because um, I didn't want it to, to, to stumble. Um, but here we go. The, the controller does pretty much all the same stuff. I've done other things like implement different gates. Um, there was this, this twitching that was in it that I believe I solved. I, I haven't been able to test this particular X-Spot out enough to, to determine if I eliminated that issue. But um, one thing you might notice is that without the shaking, it's, it's much smoother. Um, now the, the camera still needs some calibration, so it's not, it's not working completely correctly yet, but that's just, uh, that's just a software design. The, the mechanical design, I believe, is all set. Um, yeah, so the motor is four times resolution. They also implement PID loops that I very, very crudely tuned. Um, but they, it seems to work much better. It's, it's much more smooth. And most of the noise is uh, from the head motors. I, I use the, the cheaper um, AX12s. <laughs> yep, this table's a little small. Um, yeah, so I use AX12, so those are the, the things that are making the noise. So one of the, the features that a lot of people um, kind of don't see too much of is the, the camera. The, they see the cameras there, but they, don't, they never see the actual face tracking. So I've uh, made a little program, um, or, or I've implemented sockets into the program so that it streams back the image to the, to the host computer. So I'll have to reposition the camera a little bit. But then we can see what's going on. Now it's a very low resolution image. Um, but it, it's definitely a, it makes for a better user interface. So if I pick up the hexapod, you can, you can see my face. Now this is streaming over Wi-Fi. Um, and the neat part is when you're doing face tracking is you want to see how well it's detecting your face. So the program here, um, it draws a, a box around a detected face. So when you're using this as a demo, it, it makes for a much, a much better demo. Um, people can actually see the, the interaction, and, and they can have a lot more fun with it when they see it, like sort of what it's, sort of what it's doing in a way. So now just to demo a little bit of the, the face tracking. For those who haven't seen it, move the camera again. All this processing is being done on board on the little atom processor. It's plenty powerful. As long as you tweak everything, okay, it's 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 pretty it's a pretty hefty little processor. And this is all using OpenCV. One leg is knocking just because I'm missing one of the rubber feet. So there you have it.